Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the most profitable way to make money in Red Dead Online with the most efficient and effective hunting and fishing route there is in the game. So this is something I would take advantage of sooner rather than later. Uh, as we talked about earlier, Rockstar is going to be making some changes to the economy. And while I'm hoping for positive changes, there's always the chance that Rockstar could do something silly and, for example, nerf the effectiveness of hunting and fishing, which I think would be a, a, a dumb mistake. But while everything is the same, I would take advantage of this right now. Now, I saw this post from Fight Club Quotes on the Red Dead Redemption 2 subreddit. In fact, I'll even show you guys the map that we're sort of using in this video and the route as well. There's four things that you probably see here. You see the green lines, red circles, yellow circles, and the X's. So the green line is the route we're going to be taking. We start at the Valentine Butcher, and then we go until we see X. Now, what is X? X is going to be something like a deer, a pronghorn, a buck, anything that you can skin or put on the back of your horse. So you want to stop and get anything like that. The red circles are going to be sockeye salmon spawns. Now, the sockeye salmons will currently sell for $4.25 a piece. That is the most profitable fish in the game, and they're super easy to collect, as you can see. Now, from there, you're going to take another green route right across the other side of the Dakota River where you will see the yellow circles. The yellow circles are going to give us the steelhead trout. Steelhead trouts also sell for $4.25 each, and you can collect 10 of them at a time. And then that final green route takes us back to Valentine Butcher where we can actually collect more uh, animals. And I'll also talk about sort of my own strategy at the end as well. Now, one thing that I would highly recommend for this strategy is either a lake lure or a river lure. Now, you can get both of these from the general store and they're typically unlocked at level 30. However, if you spend one gold bar on them, you can get them at any time. And it's actually something I would recommend doing as it's going to make this a lot easier. Using this route, it is incredibly simple to just go from point A to point B to point C, gathering all the things you need to sell. So let's start from the Valentine Butcher and let's try and get to that location on the Dakota River. So what are we going to run into here? Well, we're going to run into a lot, whether it's turkeys, whether it's, uh, you know, jackrabbits, whether it's bucks or pronghorns or deer, all of these things I would recommend grabbing because they have items that you can sell. So I would recommend not going after one star animals, but anything that's a two star animal, I would certainly collect all of its items like the meat and the skin. And if it's a perfect animal, I would recommend getting all the items and then storing its carcass on the back. So you can only have one deer on the back, but if you utilize a tip I told you guys about the other day, how you can actually lasso animals and you can sort of drag the other carcass back to Valentine, you can do that too at sort of the very end. I definitely would not do that at the beginning. Essentially, you just want to make your route to this location on the Dakota River as profitable as possible. So basically, anytime you see an animal that you can easily hunt, you just want to take them out. Now, for the deer and pronghorns, the bow is going to work the best. And for sort of the smaller animals like birds and turkeys and jackrabbits, the varmint rifle is going to work really well. So those are two weapons that I would have on hand for this. And other than that, the only other thing you're going to need is the fishing rod, which again is unlocked at level 14. Now, once you get to the sockeye salmon spawn, just some general fishing tips. Number one, this location is perfect because of how small width-wise the actual river is, which means you don't really have to cast your line out all that far. So that's easy because pretty much any time a fish bites, it's going to take you five seconds to end up collecting it. So make sure you get as far in as the water as possible. It's really, really shallow. And this will allow you once again to make sure that you don't have to do that much fishing. 
Another tip I can give you, this one's pretty obvious, just use eagle eye. This will sort of tell you where the fish are when you have the fishing rod equipped. And number three, you really don't have to worry about the line breaking. Because these fish are not big, you don't store them on the back of your horse, they don't put up much of a fight. In fact, pretty much the second you get them on your fishing rod, just start like reeling them in. The, the line isn't going to break. It, it's super easy just to collect them over and over and over again. So once you've collected 10 sockeye salmons, which is the max that you can collect per trip, what you're gonna wanna do is head to the southeast, sort of over the landmass to the other side of the Dakota River. Now something you can do here is you can actually go inside Painted Sky, which if you watched one of my videos the other day, this is a cabin that will actually spawn rare items like horse reviver, horse stimulants, uh, jewelry, other canned goods that you can pick up. So that's something that I would recommend running to before you actually go down to the river. And then at the river, you're basically going to repeat the exact same process. You're just going to catch 10 of these steelhead trouts. It works the exact same way. Just make sure you're in the water and make sure you're gathering 10 of these at a time. Now, another reason this ultimately works so well is because the water is so shallow and because you're on sort of this riverbank, sometimes the fish will just like flop out of the water and then you'll get sort of an extra one that you don't even have to fish for. So that right there is something you can do very, very easily. And by the, this point, you should have 20 total fish. You should have 10 sockeye salmon and you should have 10 steelheads. Now, one tip I should also recommend for this is when you do start to fish, make sure your horse is calm and is not fleeing. If your horse has to be called in from a different direction, you're going to lose all the pelts and all the carcasses on the back. Hunting is really broken right now, like to the point where if you hunt something, you turn the other direction and you look back in the direction you hunted something, like the carcass will disappear. So it's a little bit broken right now, and especially it's broken if you put things on the back of your horse. So make sure that it's like right next to you and it's not going anywhere when you're fishing. Now from there, we're gonna be making the final part of our journey today, which is essentially just going back to the Valentine Butcher. Now from here, it's really up to you on how much you want to hunt. Basically, I just go for things that are on my route. So for example, if I see a good or a perfect buck, I'll end up going to hunt that. And if I find a perfect carcass, I'll actually drag the final one back to the Valentine Butcher. Now one optional step that you can do here is before going to the butcher, actually make a stop at the Valentine sort of farm area. A lot of times you'll find pigs and sheep that are for the most part always in perfect or good condition because they're farm animals. And you can do the exact same thing here. You can hunt them, skin them, and get their carcasses. Now some of you guys are gonna say, well wait a minute Mr. Boss, you're getting in trouble every time you're hunting one of these. You're getting the slaughter. Well, I have perfect honor and it did not reduce my honor one bit because it sort of counteracts itself because you're getting the resourceful good honor award as well. So this is another stop that you can make and by doing this, you're not really taking any time away from your route because you're still in Valentine and the butcher's like five seconds away. Now one thing I would do is try and time it so that you get to the Valentine farm area at night. There's way less people at night and if you do it during the day, there's a chance you might get the animal cruelty bounty. And uh, that's just gonna disrupt the flow of the things you're doing. And you, you obviously don't wanna deal with that. Now, once you've done that, it's time to turn in all of our goodies. And from there, you just want to go to the Valentine Butcher. Now, just a couple of general tips. You do wanna be careful about other people around. Make sure that no one's trying to grief you or anything like that. But once you get to the Valentine Butcher, you just wanna sell everything and even the items you might not pay attention to like the mature venison meat that you get from the deer you know that starts to add up sells for nine or ten dollars a time but the big reward there is going to be the 42 and a half dollars you're getting for the sockeye salmons for 10 of them and the 42 and a half dollars you're getting for the steelhead trouts that's 85 dollars per time just for the fish that doesn't include the carcass of the perfect buck, doesn't include the perfect deer skins, the good deer pelts, everything like that. Each time you're basically getting like $100 to $200 depending on how much you ended up bringing back. And one of those trips should only take you around 
15 or 20 minutes. So it's pretty easy to get around 300 to 400 to 500 dollars an hour if you do this very, very consistently. And the beauty about this entire route is the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Like the better you'll understand, okay, it's super easy to catch the fish or I like this route or going to this area gets me bucks instead of deers, et cetera, et cetera. You just sort of figure out and you do it a little bit quicker. And again, you can choose if you want to do the farm animal route. If you don't want to do that, it works really well for me. Again, it all depends on sort of what you're going for. And as always, there's a ton of bonuses that you're going to be getting for this. Like, for example, uh, on one of these routes, there's actually an ambush that happens. So you get XP for clearing out all the um, enemies that attack you. You could also get a treasure map for that. Um, there's also a bunch of XP bonuses you get for completing hunting awards and challenges and just the XP that you get in general for hunting animals so there's a ton of perks for doing this sort of route and uh, it really is like the most profitable way to make money in Red Dead Redemption 2. So I legitimately did this for about an hour, maybe two hours last night, and I was able to get like $500. And on top of that, I got a ton of awards. I obviously got uh, a ton of experience. I ranked up like two or three times, which was just terrific. And it's something that you can do like pretty mindlessly. Like you don't really have to pay attention all that much. I had a podcast on in the background that I was just sort of listening to because the fishing is so easy. And once you get the hunting down, that becomes pretty easy too. You just sort of need to focus on using the right ammo and then obviously finding the right deer or pronghorn or anything like that. So this right there is by far the best, most profitable and efficient way to make money in Red Dead Online. And I really hope that Rockstar does not mess with this. I'm hoping the economy changes that they're talking about has to do with, you know, increasing the payout of missions or making items cheaper not making it harder to make money than it already is. But anyways, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about this fishing and hunting route. Have you been using it? How much money have you been making? Uh, and it's a great way to take a break from hunting treasure maps and doing sort of the other things we do to make money in Red Dead Online. But like I said, let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you did go on and enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.